Welcome to Jill's Nomad Survival. I am Jill, we have Freedom and Lilith both sleeping because it was hot in here last night and then windy. Nobody got any sleep and we're gonna be talking about that today when we discuss whether it's a good idea to put an air conditioning system into your RV, your trailer, your fifth wheel, your van. You can't put one in a backpack or your tiny house. There's more to consider than you think. There's actually quite a bit to go over, so we're just going to go through the list. There will be no visual excitement here, just a lot to think about. So the first thing is really the cost, and they're kind of expensive. You know, if you have a house, you have to have a large enough cooling system for your house, but in a trailer, it's not so big. So if you're going to be stationary, you can probably put a cheap one in the window, but if you're going to be traveling, they're uh, close to $1,000. You can probably get one used for less, but it's a big investment. So you have to balance the cost of the actual system itself plus the cost of running it. And they are kind of high wattage, so that can actually add up to a lot of money very fast. So those are the big things around cost. One is do you want to pay to put it in? Two, do you have to change the electrical system? And three, what is your monthly ability to pay for that? So that depends on where you're staying and how they budget your electrical needs, but they're not cheap. So that's one thing to consider. Next, let's just talk about the electrical system very briefly. And I'm gonna do this for those of us like me who are non-electrically oriented. But the bottom line is, is that most air conditioners draw a lot of power. In fact, they're gonna draw more power than anything else that you probably have. So when you have an old trailer or you're designing one for yourself, you have to make a decision about what kind of electrical system you're going to put in and will it be able to manage the amount of power which I think most of them run about 1500 watts so that's a lot of pull like this physical trailer it's a 1970 anything over a thousand watts that I plug into the original system it shuts down the uh, the it shuts everything down. So I have to run actually two extension cords into the trailer and I have to juggle between the two of them in order for the heat to work in the winter time. I know, but we'll talk about that another day. The other thing is, is when you plug in, when you go, depending on where you're gonna go, they usually have plugs that are 15, 20, 30, or 50 amps. Not all of the older places or the older RV parks, the campgrounds, private facilities, private properties have the 30 or 50 amps that you need in order to plug in. A lot of the new RVs have two huge air conditioners and they require that 50 amp. So it's a decision you have to make in terms of where you're going to travel. Is it worth investing in the cost if it's not something you're going to be able to turn on very often? The next, as we move into this, is where are you going to park? You know, what your climate is going to be is going to really drive whether you need an air conditioner or not. Uh, you can always, if you are mobile, you can always go up in elevation in the summertime, down in elevation in the wintertime. Also, what is your hot season really like? Where I am, it's really bad the end of June, the beginning of July, and after that, it's very manageable. So I only have like three to five weeks of suffering, and then it evens out. So you need to ask yourself, where are you going to travel? Is it worth the cost and energy to put into that? Or can you just kind of suck it up and ride it out? <laughs> the next thing to consider is what are you doing inside your trailer? One of the big reasons that I would like to have air conditioner, which I don't, is it really inhibits my ability to work. You know, the computers get too hot. I really can't do a lot of, of uh, computer or video work in the afternoon. So it greatly reduces my ability to work but it also keeps my overhead very low. So you have to balance the cost of out of pocket to the cost of your ability to earn money to the cost of your comfort. Which brings me into the next section with the pets. So a lot of people, when you run the air conditioner, people shut everything down, they close all the windows, they lock it all up. It is a metal box and so while that keeps your air conditioning running cool, you have to consider also if you're away, the air conditioning goes down, 
whoever you've got left in the trailer is at risk, just like a car that heats up. So it's not the end all be all to all problems or issues. So you have to be careful not allowing yourself to think just because you have an air conditioner, you don't have to think about what's going on at home. Whereas when you don't, everything has to be open all the time and mostly it's manageable. Another issue to consider is health and I everywhere I go I see people who are all closed down. In wintertime everything's locked down, in summertime everything's locked down. You're not getting any natural light, you're not getting any fresh air and especially in newer RVs or travel trailers there's an off-gassing of formaldehyde so when you're in this tight environment without any air circulation you know there's fungus there's mold there's dirt there's all kinds of things that can really contribute to health both short term and long term so it's just something that's important to think about that when we use air conditioning we just assume that everything's going to be okay probably the last thing which is also has to do with help is sleep and it's hard to sleep when it's hot and it's actually kind of loud at night with all the windows open. <laughs> so last night we didn't get much sleep, especially me. They're able to crash now. I'm here with you. But it's something to think about in terms of, of what environment you're going to be in and whether it's something that you can do to keep the windows open all night. Uh, it's kind of hit and miss for everybody, so just something to think about. <laughs> I, you know, I'm a big fan of trying to go as low tech and as off grid as possible and just choose to suck it up. That's something that we all have to decide. Uh, the last thing I want to add about health, which I forgot, is that when you're moving in and out of hot, cold environments, you're actually, you know, creating more of a, a health problem because your body has difficulty acclimating. Part of allowing yourself to acclimate to heat or to cold is keeping into the rhythm of seasons, which is really what your body was designed for. Moving in and out of cold environments actually makes your cold hot environments actually is not as good for you health wise so just something to think about although I gotta tell you yesterday it was like a hundred degrees and all I can do is wish it was cooler today we're looking at 90 something it might be a little bit better but what can you say so that's just a little bit to think about whether you really want to get an air conditioner or not is it worth the cost are you gonna use it I can't answer that, only you can. So with that, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.